Section 8.9 talks about solid waste disposal. We're going to describe some solid waste disposal methods and describe the effects of those different methods. Um, garbage and sludge, we mentioned the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. We know that with these subtropical currents that it allows water to push trash that has been put into the ocean and have it gather in certain areas based on where those ocean currents are. Um, there's several garbage patches around the world. Um, debris range inside from abandoned fishing nets and micro pellets found in abrasive cleaners. Um, the patch mostly consists of uh, plastics, such as plastic bags, plastic water bottles. Um, and then if we look at some of these estimated decomposition rates down at the bottom here, like cardboard box is two months, um, but a glass bottle is unknown. Fishing line can be 600 years. A plastic bottle, which we use way too many of, 450 years. Um, aluminum can, 200 years. So you can see a few of those there. And those are, those are gathering in our ocean in these different gyres. The top 10 items found in the garbage patch, uh, cigarettes and cigarette filters, food wrappers and containers, those plastic bottles that we need to get rid of and those plastic bags that we can get rid of, uh, caps and lids, uh, cups, plates, forks, knives, and spoons, straws, um, beverage bottles such as glass ones, uh, cans, aluminum cans, and then paper bags are our top 10 items. These are all things, um, other than maybe the food wrappers, that we can pretty easily reduce and reduce our use of. So I want you to think consciously about doing that. These are just some artistic pictures made with ocean trash so that you can see things that have been found and the variety of things that have been found. And then a sculpture, a 38 foot tall whale made from 10,000 pounds of plastic waste and other art um, made from plastic waste. And then sculptures made entirely of beach waste to make you reconsider your plastic use. I mean, Take a look at the whole, the whole thing from the, the shark all the way down to all of this stuff around it. Um, just impressive, the amount of waste. Uh, landfills have two things that we have to be concerned with. One is leachate, and that's when water goes through the waste. And we have to make sure that water doesn't hit the, or the, the water that has gone through the waste doesn't hit the water table. And then gases, methane is a big production. So leachate is that contaminated water that passes through MSW, which is municipal solid waste, into the soil and into the waterways. A sanitary landfill aims to contaminate the surrounding environment as little as possible. So we have um, important things like a liner, which can be made of plastic or clay. We have um, pipes here to monitor the wells that are down below. We have leachate storage tanks so that we can collect anything that makes it all the way through and still collect it there. Um, we can collect the methane gas um, and then a lot of times use that to then generate electricity. Um, so this emphasizes a plastic or clay bottom liner, stormwater collection system, leachate collection system, a clay cap, we want to cover it with clay to keep it from smelling, and a methane collection system. How long does it take for garbage to decompose? Again, those plastic bottles can take up to 450 years. So just keep those things in mind. The rate depends on what that trash is made of and the conditions that are needed for microbial decomposition. Things will decompose more in when they're damp and when it's warm than will, they will when it's cold. Incineration is to burn waste to reduce the volume and, and mass, and sometimes we can generate electricity or heat in what's called a waste-to-energy system. The ash is what's left, the non-organic material that does not combust. And a big problem with landfills and many things that I've said this whole course is this whole idea of NIMBY, not in my backyard. People that oppose the local wind farm agree with the need for wind energy, but disagree with the number of reasons. Increased noise, increased bird death, aesthetic blight, and they don't want the turbine, turbines located in their immediate area. E-waste or electronic waste is only 2% of the waste stream, but it's a great concern. There's a lot of toxic components and a lot of it are those heavy metals, such as lead, arsenic, selenium, uh, flame retardants, 
cadmium, chromium, cobalt, mercury, um, all, and nickel cadmium batteries in all laptops and hand watches. 70% of toxic materials in the U.S. Um, landfills comes from e-waste. We don't process it very well in the United States. We tend to ship it overseas because it's dangerous work and we don't um, typically take care of it here. Just looking at an iPhone 5 in terms of its um, rating, it's a 2.8 on a scale of low being um, not highly toxic and 5 being high and looking at things from the button to the circuit board to the processor to the case, you can see there's a lot of bromine, chlorine, lead, and mercury in all of those parts. Ocean dumping was prohibited in 1972 by the Ocean Dumping Act, but several countries um, still dump quite a bit in the ocean, and that contributes to that big, those ocean um, patches. These are things that could happen to marine life. Uh, certainly the sea turtles have done research with these green sea turtles, and they're amazing creatures. And uh, it hurts me to see, to see them um, get hurt by our waste. And this was a pretty famous picture at one point. I saw this circulate all over the place where you see the little seahorse and he's anchored onto what he thinks is grass and it's a, it's a Q-tip. New ways to think about waste. We want to think about this cradle to grave. We want to consider all the materials and energy used in the lifetime from a product, from the raw materials to the final disposal. We've talked about this idea of cradle to grave, that it's not just uh, the initial product, but what it costs to extract those minerals from mining, the processing, the design of it, the manufacturing, um, the distribution of it, the use of it, repair and disposal and how much of that um, goes into an object. And it's not just the object itself. 